Today we're going to be building a ropeless elevator system with advanced call logic for maximum elevating efficiency. This was insanely complicated. What we want to do is we want to build like the, the shaft that it goes in and then it's going to go to the different floors and it's going to be what the what elevators typically do. And hopefully it'll be ropeless. Don't be surprised if it winds up having pistons though in the end. It could just not like go up the wall at all. I could have it like apply a constant pressure to the wall maybe. Is this big enough? What flooring do we want? I think we want like a nice wood. Plastic. Absolutely. That's my go-to. Plastic walls. So what if we have suspension and pistons doing this stuff? There we go. Have one of these bad boys. It looks like a car now. Should activate these pistons, and after they're activated, the suspension should be working. Activated. Oh my god, it works. Then control the things. Up. Down. Okay, down has trouble. Did I not, like, set this engine to do anything? Oh yeah, that makes sense. It might have, like, some kind of leveling algorithm where it, like, sees the color and tries to stay with it because it slowly falls. Let's see, we need a space of three for each door, so we could do that. The doors are all, like, uh, not connected at all. There we go. Closed. Ding dong. Maybe we should have like a lot of floors um, and then lights to indicate where the elevator's at. So below each floor is like a, um, this, plus 10 you see it, plus 15 you don't. 13 is where you see it. If this is off, then activate that, right? It's obviously not permanent, but if this is off, then have it go down. This is like one of the floors. So I've added the door logic, and basically if you stand in between the doors, they're fine. Self levels and all that. Uh, they're both off, you do that, and you can go down. And if you hit that one, you go up. If this door- imagine both doors are closing, but if this- if this one closes and you get in the way, it'll open right back up, and it won't try to close until you get away from it. And even if you stand, like, over here, just in the door frame of the first one, it still talks to the other one as well. So you don't have like a mismatch. So it's gonna be wireless uh, transmission of stuff. This is gonna start becoming a problem. Here we are. How many is this? Is this only five? So now we have to work on the logic and how it all works. Which is the same thing. Uh, my logic looks like the work of a psychopath and it doesn't even work. If only somebody could help with the situation, maybe build it, maybe like and help me out and like build no, the whole please, thing maybe. Please, no, I don't know, no, like please, maybe somebody oh, could do God, that, no, I don't know. Please. One last video. That's it, just one more. He said just one more. Alright, so first I'm gonna make a memory bit for each. To make the logic for this elevator, me, we need to first right understand its basic I'm in the middle of and behaviors. The elevator sits idle until it gets its first call which it will then travel to while ignoring any other calls that were placed after. The floor that person chooses will then determine the operating direction. The elevator stops along the way to pick up any calls that are requesting to move in the same direction. Once the elevator is done delivering all of its passengers, it will then check if it has any same direction calls in its current operating direction. For example, in this scenario, if there were any calls below it that want to go down, then if there are no such calls, it will then switch its operating direction, and depending on its new direction, it will then pick up the highest down call or lowest up call. In this situation, since the operating direction has changed to up, it will pick the lowest up call. The elevator cycles these behaviors until there are no calls left, in which case it will go back to idling. Put simply, each of these behaviors can be separate logic systems that take turns controlling the elevator. Nerd! Alright, so back to what I was saying before. I'm gonna start off by making- I finished building this two weeks ago. So, for anyone following along at home, here's how you make it. And here's all the connections to make sure you didn't miss anything. 
Alright, so my recording messed up at this part, and I don't have audio on it, so that's annoying, but I'm going to try to make a voiceover now to explain everything. So each floor has blocks on pistons that tell the cart stuff. This one tells the cart to stop at this floor. This one tells the cart to go up. This one tells the cart to go down. This one tells the cart to start moving. This one is the cart saying that it's ready to start moving. This one is the cart asking to open the door. This one is when you select a floor inside the cart, and this is the cart like telling the main system that it wants to go to that floor or whatever. This is the cart moving up and down. This is the door on the cart. This is the like the, what floor the cart is on for the lights on the inside. This is for something. This is when you're calling the elevator from outside the cart. This switches off that thing like once it's, once the cart is there. This is like the first floor that is called. This is the operating direction stuff. This is what floors the cart needs to stop at. Um, this is storing like the floors that the cart wants to go to when you select the button inside. This is what floor the cart is on using this sensor right here, distance sensor. This is if the floor is above or below the cart. Um, this is... Alright, and that's that's the whole elevator. Any questions about how it works or what it does or the anything else? Nope. Uh, okay, alright. See ya. Three eggs in the pan. Three egg in the pan. That is terrifying. I'm gonna make this go to the first floor, but then have this want to go up. It passes, opens up down there, and then goes back up to take the one that wants to go up. Stay there, but let the bottom of the day, I don't, I'm not a little stone.